Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. God gathers us from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west to worship him. Please stand, whether in body or spirit, as we worship God together. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. Come, worship the God of life and love. Let's sing together, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
We do know that God is our fount from which we receive every blessing. But as it said in that last verse, we're prone to wander. We're prone to leave the God that we love. The good news is that God pursues us. He chases after us and brings us back into the fold. Let us pray our prayer of confession now together. Patient and ever faithful God, we come to you this morning confessing that we can be a grumpy and unsatisfied people. When things are not perfect in our eyes, we murmur and complain and grumble and doubt. We lose hope in the people around us, and even worse, we lose hope in you. We challenge we put you to the test rather than trust your caring love. Forgive our doubts and complaining. Forgive our loss of hope. Let your healing, life-giving waters pour over us. Restore our souls. Amen. in a position to condemn us only Christ and Christ lived for us Christ died for us Christ was raised for us Christ reigns in victory and power for us and Christ prays for us know that in Jesus Christ you are a new creation and be at peace as you offer Christ's peace to one another I would encourage you all to move in so that we can be a close body instead of quite so spread out the peace of Christ be with you. I was at an ordination yesterday at Second First, uh, Second Congregational First Presbyterian, and they were commenting on the fact that, because there weren't a whole lot of people there, and that everybody were good Presbyterians and they were all sitting in the back. And, um, and so one of the people said, yes, it's kind of interesting because all the people from Second Congregational during regular worship, they all sit towards the front and all the Presbyterians sit towards the back. So it seems as though every, everything is full, but since there were just a small group of Presbyterians, they were all in the back. And so um, it's true no matter where we are that Presbyterians like to sit towards the back of the church. But at least you're all sort of, sort of, squashed in together a little bit sort of 
we got the outliers over here, but you know, that's okay. Maybe they'll move in as time goes on. We are very glad you are here. We did have a, a good group at the first service, so that's part of the reason that, um, that there are folks missing at this service because they came early so they could go picnic in the rain, apparently. So God speaks to us and beckons for us to listen. Let's prepare our hearts to hear God's word by singing together, Change My Heart, O oh God. We have the better serv singers at this service, so. I am going to read to you from John chapter five. After this, there was a festival of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Beth Zatha, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. <clears throat> Jesus said to him, stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was, the, was a Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. Let's give our glory and praise to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When I was in high school, my high school choir used to sing a song, Wade in the water, wade in the water, children, wade in the water, God's a gonna trouble the water. Now, I didn't know what that was about, but as I've gotten older and as I've read this scripture more, I realize it's about this particular scripture passage. The idea of wading in the water and God troubling the waters. Our picture up here is of the pool of Bethzatha, or Bethsaida, or Bethesda. It goes by all of those names. Doesn't look like very much now, but back in the day when uh, it would rain, water would pool in the low places. I'm sure none of you can understand that concept of water pooling in places when it rains. But that's what happened there. 
is that the water would pool in the low places, and this was one of the low places. And you see that arch in the middle, that's one of the porticos that's still standing. You can see some columns that are some of the other porticos. They had five porticos, and people would sit in those porticos and wait by the pool. And apparently at certain times, maybe water was flowing in, who knows, or it could just be God stirring up those waters, the waters would start to move. And as the waters started to move, those people who were sitting in the porticos would rush because apparently it was first come, first served, and only one person got the healing. They believed that God stirring up those waters would bring healing to them. And so they would rush to the pool to be healed. So Jesus comes up to this one man and by the grace of God, he knew that this man had been ill for 38 years. Can you imagine that? 38 years dealing with the same issue. And he asked him if he wanted to be made well. And how does the man respond? He responds by saying, he ha telling him why he hadn't gotten in the pool. He says, you know, I try, but every time I try to get to the pool, people are faster than me, and somebody always gets there ahead of me. But that wasn't really what Jesus asked, is it? Jesus didn't ask, so how come you've been sitting here for 38 years? Or tell me a little bit about your experience with the pool. Instead, he asked, do you want to be made well? I am sure that Jesus asks us time and time again if we want to be made well. Because all of us are dealing with an affliction of one sort or another. It may or may not be a physical affliction. It may be depression. It may be joblessness. It may be whatever. But God is saying, Jesus is saying, do you want to be made well? And rather than just saying, yes, Lord, make me well, we offer up all the reasons why we can't be made well. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water, God's a gonna trouble the water. Well, one reason why we might not want to be made well is our fear of loss, our fear of loss. We might actually have to give up something in order to be made well. Now, we might say to ourselves, especially as we look at somebody else, well, sure, you should give that up, because after all, then you'd be made well. But so often, we get so accustomed to where we are and the situations that we're in that we kind of become comfortable about that. And we sort of create our own identity around the situation that we're in. This gentleman who had been ill for 38 years probably identified himself <clears throat> by his illness, whatever that was. <clears throat> and so we become afraid of giving it up because we don't really know what life would be like if we did. You know that, that old phrase that we trust the devil that we know. You know, we, we, we accept the devil that we know and we're a little afraid of what might happen if we give it up. And so we're afraid that if we give it up, it might cost us our identity or our lifestyle, even though those things might not actually be very good for us. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's going to trouble the water. Well, going along with that fear of loss is that fear of change. You all know about the fear of change, right? Well, we've always done it that way before is the line that all of us give. I find the older I get, the more often I say it. I'm afraid to make those changes. We're afraid to approach things differently. We might have to, if God heals us of that thing that's plaguing us, that thing that we're sitting in, we might have to do things differently. If we're in toxic relationships, it means that we might have to leave that relationship. If we're in a toxic environment, we might have to leave that environment in order to have a healthy environment that we're in. <clears throat> we might have to give up the way that we're doing things 
and take on a new way. And change is hard for us. We might have to actually be transformed. And that's a scary proposition for us, isn't it? Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's are going to trouble the water. <clears throat> well, this one's related as well, because aren't they all? This is a fear of moving forward. We're afraid to move forward. We're afraid to take those steps towards that new direction. We're frozen where we are. We've become frozen in the situation that we're in, the way that we treat ourselves, the things that we do. And so we're afraid to take that step forward. We might even be comfortable where we are in our discomfort or our dis-ease. You know, it's always interesting. Whenever I go to uh, the nursing homes to visit or to shut-ins and visit, and I ask, well, how are you doing? I get a litany. Well my shoulder's bothering me, or I can't move my knee the way I should, or, you know, I'm having a lot of trouble with this, or I'm having trouble with that, or whatever. And every time I visit them, and I get, I get the same litany. We get kind of comfortable in that. What would we have to talk about if we didn't have to talk about our ills? What would we have to talk about if we couldn't say, well, I'm having trouble moving today? That's my litany for the morning. Because I'm having trouble moving today. And we might actually be content to let others go ahead of us. Even though when they finally do move ahead of us, we become jealous and envious of them because they're succeeding while we are failing. I have this problem a lot with weight control. We all know that I have a problem with my weight. We all know that I should be on a diet. We all know that I try or at least I say I try. And I see my friends go on diets and they lose all this weight. And instead of cheering for them, it's like, oh, how come they get to lose weight and I don't get to lose weight? But the reality is they actually moved forward. Whereas I just sort of sit there, I think wishing the weight off because I'm certainly not necessarily doing the thing that's needed in order for that to change. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's are going to trouble the water. It's interesting that the idea is that God troubles that water. And sometimes in our life, in order to make us finally move to change, God has to trouble the water. And we forget that those troubled waters of change and moving forward and sacrifice, they allow us to leave the unproductive, unhealthy, uninspired past behind and instead to move forward into a new life that is productive and that is healthy and that is inspired, that it energizes us instead of depletes us. We forget that while the troubled waters might last for a little while, they might go on and on for us. There is a brighter future for us that is ongoing, that is evolving, and that is blessed. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water. God's are going to trouble the water. When Jesus asked the man, do you want to be made well? The man responded with his excuses about why he was still sick. But the cool thing is that Jesus didn't get angry with him. He didn't get perturbed at him. He didn't accuse. He didn't berate. He didn't reject. All he did was to say, stand up, take your mat, and walk. The man didn't even ask, did he? Jesus just offered. He says, I'm offering you healing. Stand up, take your mat, and walk. We might be afraid to walk into those waters, but Jesus asks us to stand up and walk. He asks us to move forward. He asks us to start making those changes. 
And he tells us we will not be alone because he is there walking with us. He gives us his hand. He lifts us up. He walks with us. And we are changed. Amen and amen. Most weeks we give as our affirmation of faith the Heidelberg Catechism, that first question, and it talks about our trust and faith in Jesus to be with us wherever we go. So let us respond to God's message by affirming our faith. What is your only comfort in life and in death? <clears throat> We're going to sing a song that we don't know. Sorry. But it has beautiful words. So at least read the words, mumble along, sing when you can. You probably aren't going to be sing singing very much. I understand that. But mumble along. At least say the words with me. We cannot measure how you heal.
Isn't that a beautiful song? Beautiful message. Anyway, it's a pretty song too, just not all that easy to sing. Well, now we come to our time of God sightings. Does anybody have a God sighting that they would like to share with the group? Any God sightings? I know Patrick has one because he had one first service. Oh, it's a different God sighting. Um, I, I shared this with Betsy a little bit last last Sunday, but um, the uh, shawl stitching sisters, you know, who, who knit the shawls um, and pray over them for um, people who receive them to have peace and comfort and, and just feel God's presence. And uh, there's a coworker of mine whose mother um, is just kind of in a stage in her life where she's declining and needing more help and um, this co-worker and her I guess like six brothers and sisters are all trying to make decisions about her care and so um, and and Eileen is is the oldest and so so kind of things fall on her shoulders a little bit as the big sister and um, she uh, it's, it's just a, just a hard time, and so uh, I thought of giving her a shawl and um, presented it to her last week, and she took it. You know, I, I didn't know how she'd use it, whether she would have it for herself or pass it on to brothers and sisters, or but she, she decided to, to, I'm sorry, she decided to give it to her mom, and uh, when she received it, her, her mom said, well, this is so beautiful. Um, I don't even know these people. How? How? Why would they do this? And uh, and then she started to cry, and just that she was just very touched. And uh, so, our ministry reaches out to a lot of people that we don't know. Any other God sightings that anyone would like to share? Our prayer covenant this week is with Krista Calvin. Cassidy and Reed Goss. And so we'll be praying for them that they'll see God in a special way. I know Cassidy graduated yesterday. And so, um, so we know that she is moving on to some new things in her life. John Wade has a date for his surgery, June 12th. And so we'll be praying for him. We're still praying that, uh, that Darrow receives some news about when his surgery is going to be. And I see something about upcoming surgery for Mildred, so I want to hear what that's about, or if that's true, or did somebody misunderstand, or what? Well, um, I've had this same old pacemaker for 10 years, even though it's only a nine-year one, and I do have a date set to get a new pacemaker, possibly a defibrillator too, and... Um, I am able to drive a little bit. Oh, okay. I can go to Winnebago and Byron and Seward and a little bit, but um, not Rockford or Freeport, and so that helps a little. So when is your surgery? Oh, um, the 10th of June. 10th of June, okay, so that's a busy yeah. week. We gotta, gotta start praying. A whole bunch of us, yeah. <laughs> oh, I have another oh. Um, My uh, cousin, Jim Herbert, is still in Texas. He had this horrible accident. Um, he was driving his golf cart across the road and a truck hit him or he hit it, I don't know which. Um, he's getting to a point where he will be coming home. They're redoing his um, bathroom to make it uh, handicapped accessible. Um, and he will need 24 seven care. Um, Jan has learned how to help him get in and out of bed and in and out of a car. Um, she has seen some of the owies that he still has that have to be dressed all the time. Um, he's accepted um, the fact that he'll be home. He will not ever be going back to Texas again. So it's uh, gonna be a real uh, change for him because he had so many friends down there. But um, 
he's coming home, and they're t they've been talking about a private jet. Um, however, if he's able to get in and out of a car, maybe they're going to manage it somehow. But anyway, uh, he's coming home on the 3rd of June. Any other joys or concerns to share? I removed their name perhaps a little early, but Phyllis Samuelson, uh, Steve Anderson's uh, grandma, has, um, they were checking her over to see how well the chemotherapy has done, and unfortunately her cancer has metastasized into two other places. Um, everybody in the family is kind of hoping that she, she just starts to accept that, um, that she is entering into this last phase instead of constantly fighting for what may just be a couple of months of extra, um, extra life, but that she lives a good life for the next, next months. So um, just be praying for the whole family as they're dealing with Phyllis and for Phyllis that she's able to accept um, what's going on in her life. Um, it's always tough when you get those kinds of diagnoses. Any other joys or concerns? Of course, today is a part of our memorial weekend, and we want to remember all those who put their lives on the line to help us and to help this world um, and to keep freedom uh, reigning as much as is possible. We know that we continue to lose people. Um, it seems almost every week we lose somebody else to war, and uh, we pray that we might have peace so that we will lose no more. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you love us, that you pursue us, that you heal us even if we don't ask. But Lord, that you promise to be with us through all that is going on in our life. Lord, we struggle. We struggle with our past. We struggle with our health. We struggle with our emotions. We need you. We need your healing. Help us to put aside our, our excuses and to embrace what you have to offer us. And Lord, we lift up in our hearts those that are going through difficult times, those that have been mentioned as well as those that we know in our own hearts who are struggling today. We pray for those who are sick. for those receiving treatments and therapy. We pray for those awaiting surgery. We pray for those in the final days of their life. We pray for those dealing with mental illness and addiction. We pray for those who are so overwhelmed by life that they consider leaving it this world. We pray for caregivers. And we pray for those who mourn. Lord, we pray for the poor and the oppressed. We pray for those who find themselves living in violent places. We pray for those dealing with human-made and natural disasters. And Lord, if we might be so bold, we pray that you would stop this rain and stop the tornadoes and stop the floods. We pray for those that put their lives on the line to help us in our times of need. And we remember those who lost the battle. We pray, Lord, for our leaders here and around the world. And we pray for your church. May it be a place where we offer that hope that you give. where we offer the healing that you offer. 
and where we help others to stand up and to walk. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Well, just a reminder that we are, we're really sort of in our summer hours now. Our summer hours look a lot like our other hours. Uh, we are going to have uh, worship at 8.30 and 10.20 uh, every Sunday throughout the summer. Uh, and in between, if we have it offered, we have coffee fellowship. Hopefully, those of you who are able will be able to sign up so that you, we can have coffee fellowship in between. Uh, but certainly, feel free to come just to gather and meet some of the folks from first service and, and have some good fellowship together, whether we have food or not. Um, we want, I want to encourage next Sunday is Ascension Sunday, so we'll be remembering the Ascension of our Lord. The Sunday after that is Pentecost Sunday, and of course we'll be wearing red on Pentecost Sunday. John Rickard will be our guest preacher on that day, and so um, we will, uh, but I would encourage you all to come wearing red. It'll surprise them uh, if we all show up looking the same. Uh, we have the Bible still. It looks like some of the Bibles may have been taken from last week. Uh, these are revised standard Bibles. They're study Bibles. They do have a few helps in the back and, and throughout, footnotes throughout. Uh, I encourage you all to take them. Uh, if you know of organizations that might be able to use them, please take a bu bunch and, and give them away um, so that we can uh, make sure that they are, they are given a good home. Uh, we want to uh, also encourage you all to uh, participate. We've gotten our challenge for uh, Church World Service kits of 75 school kits and 10 hygiene kits. Um, we, they, they didn't challenge for buckets this year, although we certainly are able to do buckets or give money for, towards buckets. But Betsy has been a great help to us. I don't know if, it, I think it was Betsy who did it. So she's on the bulletin board are pieces of paper that you can take home with you that tell you how many of each of the items we actually still need. And so she's going to keep a running total of that so that we know what we need to purchase and what we don't in order to, uh, in order to make this challenge. Uh, that doesn't mean that we have to be limited to that, but we certainly can, um, can do that. So uh, some of the things, we have quite a few of what we need, and some we need all 75, for example, for a school kit, but that'll let you know about that. And so we encourage you. This church has been very, very generous with the school kits, and so we want to encourage you for that. I was going to wear my sandals today, my, uh, my um, shoe that grows sandal, but I didn't. Uh, because it was raining today, or it was going to rain. But we're, this summer, uh, in Bible camp, we are going to be encouraging as our mission, the shoe that grows. And for those of you who came uh, when we had our mission focus uh, during Lent, uh, we talked a little bit about the shoe that grows. And uh, this is an organization that makes shoes. They look like this. Uh, they're sandals, basically. And they have a good covered toe so that you don't hurt yourself. And they grow from four sizes. So this one is more or less shorter uh, in the small size, whereas the other one is in the larger size. And uh, I was this. My um, son Christopher an acolyte in uh, the church where I was a music director many, many, many years ago. And um, he used to acolyte, and they used to dress in robes and everything back in the day, you know, when we used to do things like that. And one time I was in a meeting with the pastor, and he was saying, I wish those acolytes would wear good shoes. It looks bad for them to come in sneakers while they are acolyting. Now, this was a number of years ago. And uh, I said to him, you know, Pat and I don't have a lot of money because at the time we were really struggling financially. And I said, I said, we just can't justify buying a pair of good shoes that he's only going to wear on Sundays when he acolytes. 
And so our son is going to probably wear sneakers. And I think you probably ought to be happy that he's here and that he's willing to do that. <laughs> and so he said, well, I never thought of it that way. And I was thinking about that in terms of the people in Africa or other countries where these shoes we're hoping to have go to our uh, Kiangua Parish uh, folks, but um, who don't not just have good shoes for Sunday, but they don't, their children don't have shoes for every day. They would normally walk around in their bare feet, but they need shoes for school. And the folks who designed these shoes had gone to Africa and saw children with sneakers that the toes were cut out and their toes were, the toes of the sneakers were cut out and their toes were sticking way out of their shoes because at least they had some shoes. These are people who the entire village might have to come together in order to raise enough funds so that the child can even go to school, especially in the older grades where they have to pay a fee. If we could share, it's about $20 for a pair of shoes that might last them four years as their feet are growing. They come in three different sizes, so it can start with children, small children's shoes all the way up. We can get shoes even for teenagers who keep growing too, don't they? Sometimes they grow faster than the little ones. Wouldn't that be awesome? So for this summer, we're going to be taking on that mission project to help the kids in, in vacation Bible camp. And then uh, possibly we might be able to get shoes that, they'll, that the folks who are going to Kenya will take with. But the neat thing is they have a distribution center in Nairobi. And so what we're really hoping is that maybe we continue this and that the folks from, uh, from our parish can come down or get the shoes somehow from the distribution center in Nairobi and keep this going. So next Sunday, I'll try to remember to wear the shoes, um, and hopefully it won't be raining so, <laughs> so that we can, we can actually do that. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? If not, then let's continue God's mission through our, pre oh, Bible camp. I think there might be, there. I know there are sign-up sheets for supplies to bring, and also you can sign up to help with Bible camp to be a crew leader. And uh, we're really needing families with young children so we because a lot of our kids are aging out right now and so we need we need families so if you know of kids in your in your household or uh kids in in your neighborhood or other friends who might have children grandchildren great-grandchildren please encourage them to come there are reservation forms on the registration forms on the back table and Bible camp is one of the really awesome things that we do here. We do a lot of awesome things, uh, but the, we have some awesome stuff going on. And we're going to be studying the Exodus, so they're going to be making bricks, and they're going to be parting the Red Sea, and they're going to be doing all kinds of cool things. So to that end, we will continue the mission of God through our presentation of tithes and offerings.
Lord, we thank you for all that you do and are for us. And Lord, we offer our lives and our gifts to you to be used for your purposes so that this world might know how much you love it. We pray it this in Christ's name. Amen. So we know this last song. Let's all sing together, He Touched Me. Let's reach out to those around us as we give and receive the blessing. The grace of Christ attend you. The love of God surround you. The Holy Spirit keep you. That you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.